In this video, we go over a script for Azure Virtual Desktop that shuts down unused session hosts in multiple host pools. Hello, I'm Travis and this is Zeraldos. In this video, we're going over an update to a script that will shut down session hosts in Azure Virtual Desktop, previously known as Windows Virtual Desktop, when those session hosts are not in use. This script works with the new Auto Start on Connect feature of Windows, I mean, Azure Virtual Desktop pool or personal host pools. The original version of the script was created when only personal host pools had the auto start feature. Now that pooled host pools support auto start, the new version was tested and works with pooled host pools as well. And it gets better. Due to popular demand, it now works with multiple host pools of either kind. Before we get into it, please take a second to like, smash that subscribe button, my kids told me that's what all the cool YouTubers say, and share with the world on the social media platform of your liking. Also, if you want to learn more about Windows Virtual Desktop, I mean Azure Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop on Udemy.com. Let's get back to it. I'm going to walk through the code and deploy it in the demo. Before that, there's some things you should know about before you get started that will make your life a lot easier, or at least your Azure Virtual Desktop management life. First, and I can't say this enough, set a GPO or registry settings to disconnect idle sessions and log out disconnected sessions. This script will not shut down session hosts with active connections. If a user walks away from their session and it's never disconnected, the session host will not get shut down. I'll leave a link below for more information on setting that up. Second, if you use breadth first load balancing with auto start, you need to set a maximum session limit. At the time of this recording, when using pooled host pools with breadth first load balancing, auto start will not start a new session host until the max session limit is reached on all powered on session hosts. Essentially, it works like depth first. If you don't use a max session limit with auto start, you may have a lot of users going to a small number of session hosts, even if there are other session hosts available in your pool. That would cause your users to have a bad day. One more thing before we move on. This code should be ran no more frequently than every 30 minutes. Hourly may be better. There is a delay between the point where the session host starts at login and when the user shows is connected. During this delay, the code may see the newly started session host as running without a connection and shut it down. Running this less frequently will limit the potential of that happening. Let's get on with it. We'll start by creating a new function app and then deploy the code. We'll walk through the code in the demo also. Let's start that now. Here we are in the Azure portal. I'm going to run this code as a function, but this could also be adapted for Azure automation as well. I avoided Azure automation for some of my other scripts because the minimum time between runs is an hour. Azure functions can run more frequently than that. Running the script hourly though for this is fine. If I get some requests about running this in Azure automation, I'll do an example of that as well. I should also point out that if you already deployed the previous version of the stop script, you can just replace the code with this update. From Azure Function Apps, create a new function. If you have a PowerShell function in place and you want to use that, uh, you can do that as well. I'm going to start from scratch though in this example. Create a new resource group and give the function app a name. Remember the name has to be globally unique. I'll create a new resource group and give the function app a name. Next, set the runtime to PowerShell. Set your region and go to next hosting. Create a new storage account and a new consumption plan or change it to an existing if you have one in place already. Uh, if not, just create a new one. Go to monitoring. Leave it as is, or again, select an existing if you want to use an existing one. Add tags as needed. And go to review and create. Click create once validation is finished and we begin the waiting game. I'll pause here and come back once it's finished. That finished, next step, you guessed it, let's go to the resource. 
First up, we have to enable the AZ module. Go to App Files in your Function app. Select requirements.psd1. And on comment, az equals six dot asterisk. This used to be uncommented by default and now it's commented. So we have to uncomment to get the az module to load. Click save. And then go back to overview. And we need to restart to add that module. Yes. Well, that's cooking. Let's create a managed identity. Go to Identity under Settings. A managed identity is what gives the function app rights into the subscription. We'll use a system assigned managed identity. This will have the same life cycle as the function app. Turn it on and click Save. And click Yes. Next, we need to give the managed identity rights to interact with the VMs and the host pool. Go to Azure Role Assignments. Add a role assignment. Set the scope to subscription. Make sure your subscription is selected. And under Select Role, first we're going to give it Desktop Virtualization Reader. There it is. This gives it the rights to read properties of the Azure Virtual Desktop environment, including things like who's logged in and what VMs are available. Click Save. Now we have to add another one. Scope again at the subscription. Make sure your subscription is correct and we'll select the role of Virtual Machine Contributor. Virtual Machine Contributor. That role will give the function rights to shut down a VM in the subscription, along with other rights. Click Save. Let's go back to our Function app. We can go back into our role assignments. And there they are. If you don't see these right away, don't panic. It can take a couple minutes for this to show up. Let's go back to our Function app. Let's see, we got the AZ modules installed and the managed identity set up. Let's create the function. Go to Functions and click Add. Let's go to Timer Trigger, because we do want this to run on a scheduled time. You can give the function a new name. I'll leave this one set to Timer Trigger 1, and then set a schedule. The way it's set up now, it's going to run, I think it's every five minutes. Let's change that. We don't want to run it every five minutes. This expression will run every half hour. If you want it to run every hour, just remove the slash 30. That will run at the top of every hour. I'll set it back to the top of the hour and 30 minutes after the top of the hour. Once finished, click Add. Next, let's go to code and test. Once in code and test, highlight everything and delete it. Once that's deleted, copy and paste the code from GitHub. I'll add a link below. Make sure to switch to the raw view so you don't get any extra content when you go to copy. Let's take a look at the code. The first part is some comments about the code. Pay close attention to the part about testing before putting this into production. Under the variable section, I created a multi-dimensional array. I had some issues with the best option for this part. A CSV file would have been a good option except for uploading that to the function it seemed a bit clunky. I ended up with an array of hash tables. Don't worry if you don't know what that is. All you have to do is update the host pool and resource group value in the first all host pools section. So we'll replace the host pool name. 
and do the same with the host pool resource group. So that's the host pool name and the resource group that host pool is a member of. So that is all you need to do if you have one host pool. If you have a second host pool, simply copy the block of code conveniently added to the comments and paste it under the block we just updated. Update that with a second host pool and host pool resource group. Continue doing this for each host pool you want to run the shutdown against in the subscription. Let's go to the execution part. Each host pool will run in a while loop, one at a time. I have some write outputs sprinkled throughout for testing. It gets all the active sessions, then grabs the session host name from those sessions. I have a combination of a for each and an if statement that simplifies the list to only unique values. After that, it gets a list of all the session hosts that allow new sessions or not in drain mode and are available, meaning they're powered on. Then it loops through the list of powered on session hosts and compares it to the list of session hosts with active connections. If it's powered on but does not have an active session, it shuts down the session host. Once it's done, it increments the count and moves on to the next host pool, if any. Let's save this file. Now let's go to the list of VMs in this environment. There are six session hosts, three each and two host pools, one pooled and one personal. If we go to the pooled host pool, and our session host. It shows all three are available. There are three active sessions, two on the first and one on the second. The third session host has no active sessions. Let's go to the personal host pool. We'll take a look at the session host. We can see there is only one active session on one of the three computers, but all three are available. Let's go back to the function. And once again, make sure you hit save and then click run and test. And run. We can close this view. We'll give it a couple seconds to run. Okay, let's take a look at the logs. Up here, it shows that uh, two of the session hosts, this one is for the pooled host pool, will not be shut down, but one is inactive and it will. Then we can go to the bottom and it's showing that two of them are not active and will be shut down as well. This is for the personal host pool. Full disclosure, I did have to pause and rerun this. The first time it ran, it didn't seem to do what I expected it to do. Let's see if it shut down the servers on the second run. We'll do a refresh. There's a little delay between running a command in PowerShell and for it to show up in the portal. So let's keep doing refresh. And there it is. The first three session hosts, two of them are still running. One of them has stopped. That's the one that had no active connections. And for the last three, those are the personal host pool. Only one user was logged in to the first one. The two with no active connections are shut down. That looks like it's doing exactly what we expected it to do. That, my friends, is how to stop session hosts in a pooled or personal host pool with an Azure function. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.